Roman Ayastala, I'm the author of the debugging book, and I'm here to present you a new chapter. Hello everyone, great to see you again. I'm here to present you today with something which may well be the highlight of automated debugging. Today we are talking about how to repair code automatically. In other words, you have a program that has a bug, you press a button and it automatically gets repaired and the bug is no longer there. Now, how cool is that? Does this actually work? And when does it work? We're going to see this in a second. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go right into repairing code automatically. Let me just kick this off. Desktop one, desktop two, desktop three. And here we are. You should now be able to see my screen. This is just beautiful. So title is already there, repairing code automatically. Everything else is missing yet. We don't have, we don't have a thing. But what we do have is a new class, which is called repairer. So the thing that does the repair for you. And this is a class which actually, which actually does automated repair. So to illustrate that, I'm going to give you an, a program that we already have seen. This is the middle program, which returns a, the middle number of uh, three numbers. So neither the minimum nor the maximum. And um, we can easily build a test for that one because it turns out that, oops, sorry, because it turns out that actually creating a test for that function is pretty easy. What you need to do in order to check whether this is the right result is you take these three numbers, build a list out of it, and then it's then you sort the whole thing. And it's neither the first nor the last one, but the middle one. So actually, uh, instead of having this big, big uh, construction here of um, comparisons and everything, we might just as well use that short form here, although it's a bit more expensive. So we do have a, well, let's call this middle test. It's going to make life a bit easier. We have a middle function and we have a test that actually checks whether the thing does what it should do. And now we can go and do statistical debugging on that because repair first, build, because repair actually needs a hint on where the bug might be. So what we do is we um, create a statistical debugger. Here we go. Now we have the OKI debugger. And we can now train a middle debugger. Here we go. So this is what it looks like. And now what we do is with this OKI debugger, we train it with our middle test function. Middle test fails due to the assertion whenever the, our uh, middle program returns the wrong number. And we are feeding in a number of, um, I think, 200 test cases that, have generated, that I have generated up front hundred passing test cases and hundred failing test cases. And so we get these numbers out of that X, Y, Z, and then we feed these into middle tests. And we do this under the, under the auspicion of the middle debugger, meaning that all of these calls are going to be recorded. And now, as we already have seen in statistical debugging, we can actually go and visualize um, the, and visualize uh, the distribution of false, or more precisely, the correlation of the execution of individual lines and um, failures. And this is the visualization we get. So what we see here is this actually encompasses middle as well as middle test. So what we see here is that this return Y line, which we have seen before as being, as being uh, enormously suspicious, actually is being shown as red here, meaning that this, the execution of this line has the highest correlation with failures. So, and this, this distribution is what an automatic repairer works on. What an automatic repairer does, or what automatic repair does to be precise, is as follows. It works on those lines of the code which are most suspicious. So it's going to work on the red lines here, not on the green lines, because well, these are the lines where it's most likely to find something. And then it does something which is really, say, audacious. It automatically changes these, these most suspicious lines into something else. It applies random mutations and then checks whether this gets us closer to the goal. 
So in effect, it debugs your program by applying random changes to it. Why would that work? Well, there's two things. First, it doesn't simply apply random mutations, but instead it takes code fragments that already are in your program. So it's not going to change this into an invocation of say, whatever invocation of Microsoft Word or say an invocation of Half-Life or a Dijkstra algorithm or anything else. No, it's going to put in lines in here that actually already are present somewhere else in your program. That's already, let's say that that's dramatically narrows down the search space. And second, it iterates, <clears throat> it iterates towards a goal of having as many failing test cases, test cases pass as possible. So it tries to not to make any previous passing test cases fail, <clears throat> and it tries to make as many as, as many of the failing test cases pass as possible. So <clears throat> how does this work? Let us simply first look at uh, what the actual what, what the actual result is and whether this works. And then we're going to go into details. So in order to repair code automatically, what we do is we craft a repairer on top of uh, another debugger, which really does fault localization. In our case, this is the middle debugger. So we create a repairer. Now we have a repairer. And now this repairer actually does have a method, which is called handily repair. And repair actually produces a new version of the program that no longer contains the bug. And does this actually work? Let me try that out. Within one second, it has fixed the bug. And what, what, but we don't see anything right now. Uh, the reason is that the result of the repair method is a abstract syntax tree as we have seen it so many times already. But we can of course go and visualize, um, well, simply convert this um, abstract syntax tree into a function, uh, into um, actual code, and here we go. This now is the um, middle function repaired. And you can see, well, what's the difference between the repaired function and the original function? The main point is, well, the middle function works. It works on, it actually works on all the passing tests as well as all the failing tests. All of these which previously failed now pass. And the second important thing, the second important difference is if you take a look at this line, which previously was failing, namely um, this last line, y is less than z, uh, y is greater or equal to x, and x is less than z, then we return y. Now this return y in our repaired program has become a return x. Boo! Automatic repair, wonderful! From now on, we're simply going to repair everything automatically. Why debug at all? Or actually, in the why do I mean why program at all? Because, well, I can simply start with an assert false in my program, and this fails. And then I'm going to set up a test which checks whether it's Microsoft Word. And then I'm simply going to wait till through mutations, I'm actually going to achieve uh, whatever the thousand programmers at Microsoft uh, have been up to. Well, not that easy. Um, because actually the automated repair is only going to work on simple changes to programs and it's somewhat and, and it's all it, it also may take quite some time to actually even do those simply change simple changes, but if it can do something that's really beautiful. So let's take a look a bit further um, what actually what's actually happening in here, we can enable logging for uh, sorry not here, we can enable logging for the repairer here we go, and then we get a bit of um, then we get a bit of extra information such as the um, such as first that code to be repaired the repairer takes all the code that is covered by uh, the original debugger except for any testing methods um, testing methods this this is uh, functions that start or end in tests are not included in repair because these can be trivially repaired by simply turning for instance this assertion into assert true or simply removing the assertion this is not what we want and now if we, we can evoke this thing again and now what we see here is important hints on what's actually happening. Uh, this repairer, automated repair, works by a technique which is called genetic optimization. What is genetic optimization? Genetic optimization works by having a population of candidates. And this population of candidates 
are all mutations of the original of the original program. It creates a large set of candidates, and then it evaluates all of these candidates through the test and retains those candidates which have the best fitness. The fitness being their capability to the capability to pass all the tests. And this is something which it here can do pretty instantly because um, if you look at the original, if you look at the original code, which had this return Y in here, and you remember this is done by replacing, you remember mutation is being done by replacing one statement by another that is already found in the program. So this return Y here could be replaced by, well, another return, return Y. Ah, that's not it. It could also be replaced by return X and it could be replaced by return Z and replacing it by return X actually happens to be the one mutation that um, the one mutation that actually gets the program to run. And this is what happens. And this is precisely what comes out at the end. So by replacing the return Y, we, re we by return X, we have one candidate in our population which now has perfect fitness and this candidate is being retained. Now this is, now this is a pretty cool technique and I have to say I have not built spe middle specifically for being easy to repair. This was introduced by, uh, <clears throat> by um, Jones, Harold and Stesco for an entirely different purpose, yet it's a program which actually can be repaired pretty well. We're also applying, um, we're also applying in the chapter, we're also applying automatic repair on other subjects, such as, for instance, at the very end, um, we apply this to our um, well known and well detailed um, <coughs> um, remove HTML markup function. Let me just find it in here. Where are we? Remove HTML markup. Here we go. And you will find that, um, no, sorry. Remove HTML markup also is a function that can be repaired by setting up specific mutations for conditions. And the whole setup of the repairer is way made in a way such that, well, you can try this out on arbitrary Python functions and arbitrary Python programs just at your leisure. So the repairer source code is uh, pretty substantial. That's because we do have quite a number of steps in here that need, that need to be followed. And uh, I encourage you to first look at the overall description of the <clears throat> algorithms, and then only then going into the details of how all of this is, be how all of this is being done. So um, we, do have a couple of, uh, we do have a couple of excursions in here on, um, so you can look into the details of how to actually pick individual statements, of how to mutate statements, inserting, how to evolve the population and everything, how to implement a crossover operation that actually takes the beginning of one program and switches it over with the end of another program. So there's quite some material to read in here, but I would very much encourage you to first get an overall view of what's happening, looking into the individual steps of genetic optimization, as we have them here, have a selection of candidates, determine the fitness of candidates, retain those candidates with the highest fitness, and then do mutation and crossover to obtain a, a new offspring for the population. And once you have uh, once you have looked into this general picture and tried it out on a number of your own programs, then you can look into how the how all these individual parts actually all work together. You will find that this brings together plenty of the techniques that we have explored before. So you already have seen a statistical fault localization. This is what we're having in here. We are also built on plenty of mutations to the abstract syntax tree in order to create mutations. So that's also built in here. And there even is an official uh, delta debugging step at the very end in order to get rid of statements uh, that actually have no effect in the, in the actually have no effect in the end. So this is my introduction for you into automatic repair. I wish you all the fun you may have in actually reading this material and trying it out yourself. I, for one, had lots of fun uh, building this thing. This is a technique which is now 
almost 10 years old. And I was very impressed to actually see it working pretty much exactly as I found it described in the, in the appropriate literature. So enjoy one of the highlights of automatic debugging, namely automatic repair, and try this out on your own programs. I will be very curious to see what you find. Thank you very much.